Hi everyone, my name is Nitish and today I'll be presenting our work on Matraptor, which is a sparse sparse matrix multiplication accelerator based on the row wise product approach. There are numerous applications of the sparse sparse matrix multiplication, such as the ones in graph databases. For example, here uh, I'm showing how a query of finding friends of friends of the people whose age is greater than 30 can be performed by doing a series of sparse sparse matrix multiplies. Similarly, other algorithms in graph traversals, sparse compressed neural networks, and emerging engineering applications such as grammar parsing can be accomplished by performing sparse sparse MM. There are two common approaches of performing sparse matrix multiply. The first one is the inner product approach. In this approach, we perform an inner product of a row of matrix A and a column of matrix B to produce a single output element of the matrix C. Since these are sparse matrices, uh, this requires index matching. So for example, in the first cycle, uh, we, uh, we read the non-zero from either A or B, whichever has the smaller index. In this case, this is uh, the non-zero from A. And uh, since uh, there's a corresponding zero in matrix B, we do not perform any map. In the second cycle, uh, B has the smallest index, so but A has a zero, so we don't perform any map. And even in the last step, A has a zero and B has a, uh, A has a non-zero and B has a zero, so we don't perform any map. Thus, even with three, uh, um, three operations, uh, we produce a single output element, which is a zero. The parallelism comes from the fact that different output elements can be produced in parallel. There are a few major advantages and disadvantages of uh, inner product approach. The first one is inconsistent formatting because the matrix A is stored in a row major order and matrix B is stored in a column major order. Then we have in, uh, inefficient index matching as we already saw uh, before. Uh, however, some good uh, things about this uh, approach is that it does not require any synchronization because different output elements can be produced in parallel. And it has low on-chip memory requirements because it just requires storing uh, a row of A and a row of A and a column of B onto the on-chip memory. Another common approach of performing is sparse matrix multiplication is the outer product approach. In this approach, we take a column of matrix A and a row of matrix B and we perform an outer product to produce the entire partial sum matrix for C. In this case, because the column of A has only non one non-zero value and the row of B has only one non-zero value, the outer product will result in basically a partial sum matrix where only one of the element is non-zero. The parallelism comes from the fact that different outer products can be performed in parallel and different partial sum matrices can be produced in parallel. Now again, let's look at the advantages and the disadvantages. So again, it has inconsistent formatting because uh, the, the column, uh, the A needs to be stored in a column major order and B needs to be stored in a row major order. However, it avoids the inefficient index matching that was present in the inner product approach. It does require synchronization because different parallel steps are producing the entire partial sum, out, uh, partial sum matrix and hence they can be read after write dependencies. And it has a high on-chip memory requirement because uh, every parallel steps needs to store the entire partial sum matrix in the on-chip buffers. Now let's look at some of the key challenges in accelerating a sparse sparse MM. The first one is the choice of algorithm. As the commonly uh, used approaches such as inner and outer product approaches uh, tend to be inefficient, it requires rethinking of the algorithm. The second one is the memory bandwidth utilization. Due to the low data reuse of the sparse matrices in the sparse sparse MM, it requires that we perform uh, memory access in such a way that we achieve high memory bandwidth utilization. And last but not the least is the sparse output matrix format itself. Since different P's need to produce the sparse output matrix uh, in parallel, um, and the number of uh, and the position of these non-zeros are not known ahead of the time, we need a mechanism so that these different P's can uh, work together and do not get installed uh, with, uh, with respect to each other. Do not wait for each other. So, in uh, in order to solve these challenges, we propose Matraptor. Uh, which is an efficient hardware accelerator for performing sparse sparse matrix multiplying. And the key idea behind uh, Matraptor is the co-design of algorithm and the sparse format. 
For MATRAPTOR, we employ a row-wise product approach. In this approach, we read a non-zero uh, row of matrix A and we multiply it with a couple of rows of matrix B to produce a single output, a row, single row of the output matrix C. For example, in this case, uh, we first read a non-zero value from matrix A. Its column index is zero, so we index into the zeroth row of matrix B and perform the multiply accumulate. Then uh, we go to the second non-zero from A. We read the two non-zero entries from matrix B and we perform multiply accumulate to produce the final results of the output matrix C. The parallelism comes from the fact that different uh, different rows of the output matrix C can be produced in parallel. Uh, the major advantages of this uh, approach is it has consistent formatting. So all the matrices A, B, and C are uh, stored in a column uh, in a row major order. It has improved index matching. It does not require any synchronization, and it has medium to low on-chip memory requirements. Now that I have talked about the algorithm, let me show you how we can achieve high memory bandwidth utilization by co-designing the sparse format. But before getting into that, let me show you uh, how why uh, common sparse storage formats such as uh, CSR uh, do not achieve high memory utilization for the for the sparse matrices. So here I'm showing the CSR format. In this format, the non-zero uh, non-zeros from matrix um, A are stored in in a row major order in a values array. A column uh, ID array stores the column indices of these non-zero values and a row pointer array stores the pointer to the beginning of different rows in these two arrays. Now, uh, if we perform a round robin allocation of different rows to different P's and stream the data through these P's, let's see how, uh, how the memory axes look like. So for example, in the first cycle, we can see that the memory axes are not contiguous. In the second cycle also, they are not contiguous. And in the subsequent cycle, we can say that memory axes in the uh, are not really contiguous in the CSR format. And now, if you look at the memory bandwidth utilization, we can see that with two, four, and eight piece, uh, the bandwidth utilization of uh, CSR format is actually quite low. Modern 3D stack memory technologies such as SPM can provide a memory bandwidth of up to 128 Gbps with eight uh, channels. However, in order to achieve this kind of memory bandwidth, we need to exploit the memory level parallelism. Memory level parallelism can be achieved by accessing different memory channels and memory banks in parallel. And it is hampered by banks and channel conflicts. Now, if we look at CSR, we see that a single row is split across different channels and row parallelization incurs channel conflict. In order to solve these issues, we propose a new sparse storage format called cyclic channel sparse row or C square SR. In this format, uh, first of all, different rows of the sparse matrix are assigned to different uh, channels in a round robin fashion. For example, in this case, row zero and row two are assigned to channel zero and row one and row three are assigned to channel one. Then for each channel, the, the non-zero from the rows assigned to it are written contiguously to its values array. For example, in this case, um, row 0 and row 2 are written contiguously in the values array of channel 0 and row 1 and row 3 are written in the uh, values array of channel 1. Again, the set, uh, column ID array stores the column indices of these non-zero values and row pointers store the po uh, row pointers. Now, if we see the streaming of uh, these non-zero values onto a set of two P's, we see that in the first cycle, in the second cycle, the memory axes are contiguous, third cycle and even the fourth cycle, we see that the memory axes are always contiguous within each channel. And the C square SR, uh, in C square SR, none of the rows is split across channels and row parallelization does not incur any channel conflicts. And uh, producing the output matrix in C square format also means that different P's can actually work independently and produce their outputs independently. And hence, uh, we saw our third challenge as well, where uh, where we don't really know the number of non-zeros in the output matrix ahead of the time. If you look at the memory bandwidth utilization, we see that with two, four, and eight P's, the C square SR uh, achieves really high bandwidth utilization compared to the CSR format, and it also uh, quite close to the peak uh, peak memory band. 
Now finally using the row-wise product approach and the C square sparse sparse storage format, we implement the architecture of MatRaptor. It consists of sparse A and B loaders and the P's. The sparse A and B loaders read, read the matrix, uh, the matrices A and B in the C square SR format. The P's perform the MAC operation and store the results back to the memory. Um, MatRaptor architecture implements a two level of load balancing for high computer utilization. The, uh, in MatRaptor, we perform round robin execution across the P's by and this comes from the fact that in C square SR we are doing a round robin allocation to different channels. And uh, MatRaptor performs decoupled memory and compute axes and it performs the multiply and merge phase uh, in a decoupled manner. Uh, on the right, we are showing the load imbalance uh, for different benchmarks. And as we can see, the imbalance is uh, less than 5% for almost all the benchmarks. And for few, like, it is it is almost work balanced in terms of evaluation we performed a cycle level simulation in gem 5 with 8p array and a memory width of 128 bytes we used 10 4 kilobyte queues and uh, hbm with 128 gbps of peak bandwidth we modeled a single p in rtl using pi metal and our baselines were uh, intel mkl on cpu uh, coos parse on gpu and uh, outer space uh, for accelerator on the right, we are showing the area and power breakdown. As we can see, the most of the area and the power is uh, consumed by the sorting uh, by the queues or the SRAMs, which is obvious because uh, sparse fast MM is a highly memory bound uh, application, uh, and hence uh, most of the area is going for the memory. And in terms of data sets, we use the sweet sparse data set. So now uh, let's look at the performance result of uh, MatRaptor compared to the baselines. So here I'm showing the speed up of, um, of different designs over a single threaded CPU. So CPU 1T represents CPU with one thread, CPU 1T BW represents CPU with one thread and bandwidth normalization. CPU 12T, 12T BW represents CPU with 12 threads and 12 threads with bandwidth normalization. And then GPU and GPU BW represent GPU and GPU with bandwidth normalization. And then we have outer space and mat raptor. And as we can see, for pretty much all the benchmarks, uh, MatRaptor is outperforming CPU and GPU uh, and outer space. Um, and overall, MatRaptor achieves 129.2x, 7.9x, and 1.8x speed up over CPU, GPU, and outer space. And 480x, 7570x, uh, and 12x uh, energy efficiency over CPU, GPU, and outer space. Thus, finally, to conclude, uh, MatRaptor is a new sparse sparse MM accelerator which exploits the co design of the hardware in the sparse format. It is the first accelerator that uses the row-wise product approach. Um, it proposes a novel sparse storage format C square SR to achieve high memory bandwidth and achieve significant speed up and energy efficiency over CPU, GPU, and outer space. In terms of future work, we are integrating MatRaptor into a many tiny core system. And uh, we are trying to demonstrate a real prototype on FPGAs and AC.